Hello, everyone, and welcome to our discussion of client deposits and retainers in Design Manager. My name is Brad, and I'll be hosting the demonstration today. If you have questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions pane on your GoToWebinar panel. If the question is outside of the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. And lastly, if you miss a portion of the webinar or want to review any of our past discussions, go to our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc., Design Manager INC. And here you can see any of our past webinars, tutorials, and courses, such as our tutorial sections on both Design Manager and Design Manager Pro Cloud, our project management courses, accounting courses, and here's our weekly webinars as well. Today we'll be discussing the various ways to record, maintain, and utilize deposits and retainers in Design Manager. So let's get started. Monies received from the client prior to the inception of purchasing the goods and services for them are known as client deposits and retainers in Design Manager. And they're going to be stored in the client deposit liability account. <clears throat> Let's take a look at our accounting tab. Our accounts for our account glossary. And we can see, in our case, account 23,000 is our client deposit liability account. Now, the client deposit account is actually a very specialized account, and you can truly define it in the company information window. Let's take a look over there. So we go to our file menu, company information and settings. If we click our other accounts tab, right under our receivable accounts, we can see our client deposit account. So we're associating account 23,000, letting Design Manager know that's going to be used to handle client deposits. Now, if you wanted to use a different liability account, you can set it here, but it's not recommended to change the client deposit account after you've begun using the program in earnest. And if you need to do so, please contact our technical support for any suggestions we may have. <clears throat> okay. Now, in accrual accounting, which is the method Design Manager employs and is the recommended method for interior design firms, this allows us to hold these funds for the necessary working capital, yet without being liable for sales tax. And there's other advantages as well. In fact, you'd even be, hold, you'd even be receiving interest if the monies were sizable and you've been physically deposited into an interest-bearing uh, uh, banking account. So there's a lot of reasons why maintaining your client deposit as a liability account uh, rather than directly into revenue or something along those lines is advantageous for a design firm. Now, in most cases, deposits and retainers will eventually be used to reduce the balance of the invoice to the client. The client deposit is a liability as the funds truly are still the clients until they're applied to the invoice, which represents the transfer of ownership of the goods and services and that application of the deposit and or retainer uh, to that transfer, reducing the uh, total balance due on the invoice itself. Now, ret retainers and deposits are fundamentally similar, but have different uses in Design Manager. Accounting-wise, they're handled exactly the same. They all go into that client deposit account eventually. But to differentiate the two in brief, let's begin with retainers. Retainers are funds received from the client that allow you to begin purchasing and ordering the agreed upon goods and services, and it sort of acts as a good faith receipt between your company and the client to ensure payment upon completed design services, et cetera. However, they are not associated with any actual items, but rather with the project itself. The allocation and administration of retainers is completely manual. Now, deposits, on the other hand, unlike retainers, deposits are tied intricately to the items contained on the proposal to which the deposit is received. Deposits will automatically be applied to the item upon the item being invoiced to the client. Let's begin discussing retainers first in more earnest. The benefits of retainers are that they give you that complete control over how these funds are going to be utilized. But with that power and freedom comes a greater responsibility in accurately monitoring the usage of the retainer or retainers. Retainers and deposits are both versions of cash receipts in Design Manager, along with uh, payments on invoices and what we know, what are known as miscellaneous cash receipts. For more information on cash receipts in general, entering them, editing them, etc., be sure to check out our accounting course for receiving payments. 
And in this case, I go into discussing just the entry and maintenance of cash receipts in general in great detail. So let's go ahead and add a retainer for one of our clients. To do so, like any cash receipt, we remain on our accounting tab, stay in our accounts receivable frame, and click our cash receipts button. And that gets us to our cash receipt window. Anytime the funds are coming from a client themselves, we always want to click the add button and put in the necessary information to input the receipt. So let's imagine that we got a uh, retainer from our, uh, our Hilson client uh, for one of their projects. Go ahead and pop in their project code. You could put in the client's uh, code instead, or if you're paying an invoice, you could put that number in as well. And then I like to just follow right to left, top to bottom, and input all the information accurately and quickly. So let's imagine they gave us a $5,000 retainer. 5,000 would be the amount. <clears throat> we can use today's date for the receipt date. That's just fine. Let's imagine they paid via check. So I can select my check payment type and I can optionally input the check number itself. Now, one thing about retainers are they must be entered manually. Design Manager can't assume or, or default any, uh, any amount for a retainer. So we can see our very first line on our deposit and retainer grid is to be used for entering retainers. So I, all, I must always keep it highlighted and click the edit button as indicated by the pencil, which allows me to input the amount itself. And we set an even 5,000. Transaction description, entirely optional in Design Manager. I find them extremely valuable when I'm trying to review information that I may have entered in a weeks or even months prior. And it could be something as simple as about retainer for wine cellar. Click OK. Upon clicking OK, notice that I've already selected or tagged my retainer. And upon doing so, Design Manager begins calculating the receipt itself. So I have $5,000 selected. We're not including any payments on invoices. So my total receipt matches my amount perfectly with a difference of zero. Very easy. I'm entering in my $5,000 retainer. Click OK. I can see my total receipts uh, are calculating in the top right corner. I could put in as many receipts as desired. I could print a journal out if uh, so required or desired of all the receipts before posting them. But in our case, I'm going to click the post button and go ahead and record the retainer. Now I can review it on the existing tab and we can see it right at the top. So where else can I see the effects of that retainer? Well, Design Manager is fully integrated. So if I go, let's say, to our project tab, our projects window, select our Hilson Pocono home and click our status button, I can see the retainer being shown and displayed here as well. Look on our summary tab under the client deposit retainer frame right there, retainers received. There's our 5,000. So we have one retainer uh, recorded and there it is. I can also see that on in more detail on the deposit retainers tab and there is our retainer that we just added. But we can even see that we still have that full retainer to be utilized along with the deposit on a proposal and the total available amount as well. So even if I might not have access to my cash receipt window as a project manager or a principal designer or a senior designer, I can just come into my project status tab and say, oh, great, the retainer for uh, the Hilson project has come in. I don't even need to ask anyone throughout the office. All that information is available for me as soon as it's entered into the accounting side. Very easy, creating a retainer. Well, now with that retainer, as I said at the beginning of the discussion, I can then move or reallocate that retainer based upon the needs of the client or how I want to internally handle the uh, application of that retainer. So let's think about one of our projects. How about the Carter's Pennington home? Let's imagine that the um, it's towards the end of that uh, project and just the guest bedroom needs to be completed. If we go back to our status window for that project, we can see just like our Hilson project that I have a retainer received of 5,000 and 
it's still available or open. So I can use that retainer in any manner that I and the client decide. And if we hop over to our proposals for that project, whoops, we can see, unlike our previous proposals, our guest bedroom, we have requested a deposit but received nothing at this point. So we can then take that 5,000 and say, well, we still have uh, the remainder of the guest bedroom to complete. Why don't we remove or reallocate that $5,000 retainer and apply it to a deposit on that proposal? Very easy to do so. Such cash receipt manipulation or uh, movement or reallocation is always done through our cash receipt window, a very common theme in this discussion today. So I'm going to add a new one for our Carter's project. In this very specific case, what's my amount? Technically, it's nothing. I'm not getting any new funds from the Carter's. I'm just reallocating how some funds that are already received are being recorded or utilized within the program. So my amount would actually be zero. I'm going to select the payment type of check. I have to select something here just because it allows me to input a little information into the check number field. So I could say something along the lines of apply retainer. Now, how do I change or reallocate that retainer? Well, on our retainer line for the Carter's project, we can see, hey, we've received the 5,000 and 5,000 that's available. So to remove or reallocate that, I'm gonna go back to my edit button and I'm gonna input a minus. 5,000. In other words, I'm pulling off of that retainer. I could say uh, move to proposal 0003. Now my this payment says minus 5,000 and my totals are recalculating along the bottom. And from here, here's proposal 3. The design manager is defaulting the uh, this payment to be 28 0990 because that's what I requested. However, that's not what I'm going to be adding to this proposal. So I need to edit this one as well and change that 280990 to a positive 5000. Let's change our transaction description from retainer and that's selected as well. And since our retainer of minus 5000 is selected along with our deposit of positive 5000, well, our total receipt is actually zero. It's exactly what I'm intending to do. Click OK, and I have one receipt listed. There's two distributions, our positive deposit of 5,000 and our negative retainer of 5,000. My net effect on cash is zero. I'm simply moving how that retainer is or how those funds are being utilized in the program. Click OK or post and OK, uh, yes to finalize the posting. And our existing tab, we have, hey, it's a zero receipt that has two distributions of just reallocation of the retainer itself. Now, what just happened? Let's take a look at some of the windows that we've been working on previously. Let's go back to our project status window. Now we can see our retainers received has gone down to zero. Our available is still 5,000. Those funds are still available. They're just reallocated to a deposit now. On our deposit and retainers grid, we can see here's our initial retainer from a few months back. There's us putting a negative or the reduction of that retainer and then applying it to a deposit. So we're simply moving that open retainer to an open deposit. Back on the proposal window, We can see what happened here as well. So we had the requested of 28 and change. We've truly received 5,000. I use my apply retainer <laughs> check number, just gives me more information or and it allows that information to be conveyed uh, clearly to the client as well. And the date of that reallocation and even how much is available. And the same on our proposal status window. We can see each of the requested amounts for all of the items, but the received amount 
is increased proportionately to that requested amount. So that it sums in to that 5,000. And I could even reprint our proposal using the show actual deposits option. And lo and behold, our proposal almost turns into a de facto statement of how much uh, future due the client will owe. If we look at the end, we can see our subtotal freight sales tax, the original proposal amount, and here's us applying the retainer, which is very clear on this as well. And the client knows they have roughly 900 to pay in the future. Fantastic document to provide them <clears throat> as the fiscal status of that proposal. Great, retainers, very simple, lots of freedom, and with that freedom does come additional responsibility because you're manually manipulating how you want it to be utilized. So let's turn the page over to deposits now. Well, deposits are also funds received from the client, and this is indicating that the provision of goods and services has been agreed upon and the deposit will be utilized to likely begin purchasing of such goods. Unlike retainers, however, deposits are tied intricately to the items on the proposal to which the deposit is recorded, as I said at the beginning of the discussion. Design Manager uses the deposit requested amount on the item window to determine how much uh, deposit to allocate to each item on the proposal. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look. Let's go to our project specifications. Let's grab our Hilson project. And we'll take any item here. On the item window, item tab, I can see a client deposit percentage and the very important deposit requested amount. And in this case, I'm requesting 50% of our 975, which of course does equal our uh, 487.50. Now I could change that, say I want 75%, design manager will automatically recalculate it for me. Or I could just type in a value. Let's say I wanted an even 800. I can do that as well. So you really can control how much you're going to be requesting for a particular item. All of that can actually uh, get set uh, as a default on the project and even on the company level as well. So for each project, let's take a look at the Hilson project again, defaults, I could set a default client deposit percentage and whether or not to include sales tax in that, that deposit. Some firms like to, some don't. And if all of my projects, or at least the vast majority of them, are generally configured to get the same client deposit percentage, I can even configure that all the way as a master company default on our company information window, advanced, general tab, and we can see both the deposit percentage I want to default to new projects and whether or not to include tax and deposit. So you don't have to type in an amount every time, just configure your company and projects properly and Design Manager will do all the work for you. Okay, so <clears throat> how do we add a deposit? Well, as I said a little while ago, all funds coming from the client, or actually any source, are gonna come through our cash receipt window, just like our retainer previously. We'll click add. Back on our familiar cash receipt window now. Let's go to the Hilson project. And we can see, just like we saw for the Carters, we have our retainer line, and we have a line for each of our proposals that have not yet either been completed or have not yet received deposit in full. And let's imagine that we have, um, let's say that the Hilsons are going to give us and even 2,500 on their Visa card rather than paying for the, uh, the 2,340 that we, were, we requested. Whenever funds are coming in, the amount is what they truly paid. So if they gave us 2,500 on the Visa, that's our amount. Today's date again is just fine. We'll use Visa as our payment type. Now, pause here for one moment. By selecting Visa as the payment type, I'm not truly charging the client's card. Unless, however, Design Manager has partnered with uh, one of the premier credit card processing companies in the country, Cayenne, and if I subscribe to their merchantware service as well, not only could I put in the Visa, Design Manager would allow me to, upon posting, to either swipe or enter the card in manually. 
and then I'm actually recording the receipt in Design Manager while simultaneously processing the transaction through Cayenne Secure Gateway, really saving myself a step. Mine, however, is not configured for that, so I'll just go ahead and leave Visa, and I'll say perhaps Visa as the check number and maybe the last four digits of the client's uh, Visa card account. If I select our proposal for the outdoor living furniture, notice that my deposit is coming in at the 2340, but I have a difference because the true receipt was 2500. Again, I need to tell Design Manager, we didn't get 2340, we got a little bit more. So just by editing, I can change that to the actual 2500, maybe put a description in here, slight overpayment, and we're ready to go. And now my payment and amounts agree with that difference of zero. Click OK, and I can go ahead and post. And again, we can see and review our receipt right on the existing tab. So that's fantastic. We've got the deposit in there. So since Design Manager is fully integrated, let's see all the places where we can see the effect of that deposit coming forward. Jump back to our project tab. Let's begin with the proposals. Check out our Hilsons, and there's our proposal too for that outdoor living area. We can see the total proposed amount, what we requested, what we actually received, again, that slight overpayment, the fact that the client paid on their visa, and the date we recorded it, along with the fact of how much is truly still available, all of it, of course. We can see that in greater detail on the proposal status window, where we can see what we requested back on our item window for each of the various items on the proposal, and that proportional increase in the total deposit received. We can also see that back on our now familiar project status, we could see our deposits received have certainly increased. We can see that in greater detail on the deposit and retainers tab, where we can see there's our brand new deposit of 2,500. And lastly, on our specifications, let's take a look at item six on that proposal. If we go to the status tab of the item window, on our proposal grid, we can see there's our proposal two for the outdoor living area, and our deposit received amount is shown here along conveniently with the client's check number and check date. And we can actually track what we requested versus what was received. So no matter where you are in the software, the fact that that deposit is recorded, I can see it in any place that would uh, be logical to, to do so. Great, okay. Let's imagine now that a deposit has been applied to a proposal and the client rejects an item at a later date. Now, provided the item or items have not been invoiced, you could simply edit the proposal, remove the item or items, and Design Manager is going to redistribute the deposit. Let's see how that works. Let's go back to our proposal window. Let's grab another one of the Carter's projects. Let's take a look at our top proposal here, proposal three. We can see that we've requested and received $3,926. And on the status window, we can also see that each of those items have that exact distribution of the deposit received amount. Now, let's imagine that they're going to reject one of the items. Let's say they're going to not take the sconces, for example. So where does that 173.50 end up being recorded, or where does it go? Let's take a look. Let the Design Manager handle all that redistribution for you. You can simply edit the proposal, remove the sconces by untagging it, and clicking OK to regenerate. 
So now I'm still keeping proposal three, but I simply no longer have the sconces within our wine cellar. By closing and accepting, my requested amount has decreased, but of course my received amount has not. I still got $3,926 from the client. So it's still allocated to that proposal. And now in fact, if we look at our status again, we have that proportional increase to the items remaining on the proposal. So that extra 170 and change got allocated uh, proportionately to the remaining three items. And then I generally would reprint. I would select show actual deposits. And I can provide the client with a new proposal showing all of the, the updated pricing, their original deposit, and now what they're going to be owing in the future as well. Back on our project specifications, if we go to back to our Hilsons, oops, Carter's, sorry, Carter project, and we go down to item 14. Notice a few things. One, my status has retracted back to specifying because I'm no longer on a proposal, nor certainly do I have a deposit associated with it. Further, if we edit these sconces, go to the status, I no longer see the proposal, nor of course the deposit itself. So again, instantaneously all that information is being updated throughout the software. I did say, however, I made the caveat about editing a proposal, trying to remove an item that's been invoiced. If it's been invoiced, it's actually utilized or applied that deposit. So if we go back to our Carter's project, and let's say edit proposal one, if I tried to remove item one, sign manager is automatically gonna alert me, hey, <clears throat> the item can't be removed from the proposal. It's already been included on an invoice, the invoice must be credited, et cetera. So design manager is not going to allow you to remove the deposit from an item that's already utilized that deposit, which makes common sense, of course. <clears throat> like the retainer, we can move a deposit from one proposal to another, uh, we can move it to a retainer, we could even uh, move it to a payment on an invoice. The procedure is the exact same as we saw when we were reallocating our retainer. Let's stay with our Carter's uh, Brigantine Beach Home project. Let's imagine that unfortunately the Carter's are Eh, they're not going to proceed with proposal three at all. The wine cellar is going to be scrapped. But they want that deposit to be utilized to other areas that they may still uh, have in effect, invoices, etc. Whenever we're trying to reallocate funds, just think of our cash receipt window. Add another one. Let's go to that bring a team beach home. Just like we, as we were working with the retainer, we're not actually getting any new funds, nor are we removing any funds. We're just moving how they're being allocated in the software. So the amount is still going to be zero. I'll again use my check. Let's say uh, for the check number, let's put in something like move deposit. But I don't see proposal three on my client deposit retainer grid. Well, you won't. Design Manager tries to keep your cash receipt window uh, as tidy and as user-friendly as possible, so you're not going to see proposals which, you've, which have already received either the requested amount or greater than the re requested amount. To do so, you have to click the Show All option. And now notice we see all of our proposals that were originally hidden because the received to date value is higher than the requested amount or equal to. And here's our Proposal 3. So if we want to reallocate or remove the deposit from that proposal, edit, uh, <clears throat> edit button again, we're going to input the minus to indicate the removal of the deposit and the full amount. Transaction description, 
let's just say something like oh, reallocate deposit. We're already selected and we can see our initial reduction in the deposit. Let's say the Carters wanted to take that 39 in change and well, they want to pay off some outstanding invoices. Invoice 10,003 and 10,004 both have you know, nominal uh, amounts due left. So by selecting or tagging them, we're going to be using some of the funds to close those invoices. The remaining 2,981 in change, they might want in their retainer for future use. So we can even go back to our retainer line. Always have to edit retainers because Design Manager can't default a value for you. And let's put in that 2981.98 from proposal 003. Click OK. And now I have the negative or the reduction of the deposit of 39.26 on proposal 3, but I'm reallocating a large portion to the retainer while I'm closing off two invoices. And our total receipt is indeed zero. Click OK. Now we have one receipt with four different distributions, the negative deposit, positive retainer, and those two payments as well. Click Post, and we just moved a lot of funds around. Let's see what happened. Start with the proposal window. Now on proposal three, the received amount is zero. But since I input my check number of move deposit, I can immediately see that something happened here. Those funds were reallocated elsewhere and it was done on today's date. And the same for the proposal status window, that received funds are gone for all of our items. On the accounts receivable side, let's take a look at our client invoices, existing, and we can see that invoice 10,003 and 10,004 are now paid in full. Great, so those invoices are closed for the client. And our project status window is going to show all of that effect. We can see an increase in the retainers. We can see uh, our balance due on the invoices going to zero. So on our, def on our detail version of the uh, deposit and retainers, we can see there's our original deposit. This is us removing it. This is us reallocating some of it to a retainer. So we're basically just reallocating those open funds. On our invoices, if I uncheck show open, since they're closed, we can see that both of the invoices are complete as well. So that, that simple reallocation can be applied in however complex method that you may need to desire or to uh, you desire to meet your client's needs. Very powerful tool. Okay, another feature available when using deposits is the additional deposit request. More and more frequently, we're seeing designers ask for an initial deposit of say, oh, I don't know, 50%, but then requiring a second, smaller deposit in order to keep the cash flow at an acceptable level. This could be accomplished using an additional deposit request, and it's done so from the proposal window. Let's go back to the Hilson project. And let's say that, uh, let's take our outdoor living area. Now we've requested a certain amount. There's our $5,000 uh, deposit we received on the, from the Visa card. <clears throat> let's say as time progresses though, we wanna get another 25% or some additional funds on that particular proposal. To make that deposit request, we actually edit the proposal and now go to the additional deposit request tab. And from here, I can manually input an amount, or I can calculate a certain percentage by clicking the Calculate button. It's defaulting to 50%. Well, guess what? That's coming from my default uh, client deposit percentage on the project window, as we saw previously. If I want to get just 25%, I can change, hit Enter, and Design Manager is going to calculate the 25% for me. Now, 
That's the percentage of the original proposal total, not the proposal less any deposits received. So it's an additional amount of the proposal total itself. If you want to request a portion of the remainder due, you'd have to enter that value manually. Today's date is just fine for the required date. I like to show any deposits we've received so far. And if we click OK to generate, you're going to see some subtle differences in the proposal document itself. One, right in the title, it says deposit required, announcing to the client that we're sending a deposit request. And if we go to the totals page, we can see original amount, adding all deposits so far since we selected the show actual deposits option, the total remaining, and the total we're requesting as a deposit at this point. If we close and accept, now we can see that we've created our deposit request uh, format. And even on the far right column, we can see how much we requested additionally and the required date. So that's a very great way to request more deposit once you've already received funds at all. Now, for more information on deposit requests or proposals in general, quite honestly, go to our YouTube channel again, our Project Management Course 1 on Proposals, and I'll go into all of that information in much greater detail. Now, let's see. Applying deposits and retainers. In most cases, we're not going to be moving retainers or deposits around, as I've just demonstrated, but rather, we really just utilize them or apply in the design manager vernacular on an invoice to the client. Let's see how that works. So let's go to our accounting, and now we'll switch over to client invoicing. On my client invoice window, I'm going to click Add Invoice, and we'll use our Hilson project as the example. Let's say I'm going to invoice for uh, all the items uh, in the outdoor living area that were on Proposal 2. I'll even select Proposal 2, which narrows down the items being displayed, which makes my, um, my experience a lot easier to see which items I want to invoice. Today's date is just fine. Transaction description, that's optional. That won't appear on the invoice. It's really for internal use. This could be an uh, invoice for outdoor area. And if we select or tag our first item, notice as we're recalculating our totals along the bottom, the deposit that was received against that item is automatically being applied to reduce the balance due. Deposits, as I said at the beginning, are intricately tied to those items. So Design Manager is going to store the deposit with them and use it at the time of invoicing. If I go ahead and use my tag option and quickly tag the rest of them, we can see our total invoice price, the tax, that's our original a visa deposit of 2,500, and we have a balance due. Now a few things here. First, conveniently listed is the available retainer. Design Manager is gonna maintain that value for you just so you can see if you want to use any of that or apply any of the retainer to this invoice. And for those really observing, notice the only area that I can type in in the totals region is the retainer itself. And I can use any or all of that 5,000. I can't, of course, use a number, let's say 8,000. Design Manager is going to uh, conveniently let me know that I've exceeded the amount of available retainer, so I can't get myself into any fiscal trouble. But if I wanted to use the full 246080, it's certainly going to allow me to do so. And as I type into the retainer field, notice that the balance due automatically recalculates for me. Click OK, and I'm ready to print and post my invoice. And we can see the total sale, the tax, the deposit applied, that's my actual deposit from the proposal and my additional retainer being used as well. And of course, the balance due is zero in this case. Go ahead and print. And we can see all of our items. And in the total region, 
you can see all of our amounts and design managers blending all the deposit and retainer together for us for clarity for the client. Close and accept. And now our invoice is on our existing tab for future reprinting and review, et cetera. So what happened here besides the invoice itself? Well, let's take a look on our proposal status. We could see right from this window that we've invoiced the proposal in full, how much deposit we've utilized. If we go to the status tab, we can see immediately I can come into this window and I know that all items have an invoice in full. How? Because our information bar says four out of four items are invoiced in full, items in red are not invoiced or may need to be reviewed. Well, all of our items are quote unquote in the black, so I know they're all invoiced in full. I can see how much deposit was received, what was invoiced, the total invoice amount, and the amount totally truly applied as well, which is going to include that retainer amount. And lastly, back on the status window for the project, we can see that I've been using or applied uh, 49, 60, 80 so far on both the uh, client deposit retainers uh, frame and the invoicing frame. We can see that in detail on the deposit retainers grid where I can look at the invoice itself. There's our invoice 10,007 and see the application of the deposit and retainer. We can see the open values along the bottom. And same on the invoicing tab, I need to show open only because as we saw the retainer uh, and deposit close the invoice in full. So integrated throughout the software as we're making all of our fiscal entries, we can see that throughout all the areas in Design Manager itself. Great, okay. So now we've discussed a lot of the overall retainer and deposit functionality but let's discuss some tools to monitor the status of those funds. What well, we've already discussed several. We discussed using the proposal and project status windows repeatedly and the item window status tab that allows us to review the deposit and retainer usage. So those three windows are very, very convenient depending on what information you're looking for. But we also have some reporting tools as well. First and foremost, if we go to our accounting tab, accounts receivable reports, we have the open client deposit report. If we go to print that, it's going to ask us for a fiscal month. In other words, we want to see the status of our deposits as of a particular period. This means that I can run the report retroactively. So if I wanted to see how my client deposits were at the end of the last fiscal year, I could do that as well. We have the ability to uh, narrow the scope of the report by entering in either a client or project range. And I have a variety of summary of, of uh, formats. And we'll start with the summary. The summary open client deposit report, let's make that a little bit bigger, shows one line per client with the total available deposit and retainer and how long those funds have been utilized. Any negatives are going to be the application of those deposit retainers to invoices or the refunding uh, of them as well. We have a detail version. This is going to list one line for each of the activities that comprise the totals that we saw on the summary version. So if you want to analyze where all of these funds are coming from or the uh, application of them to invoices, the detail is the way to go. There's a few other handy versions as well. Summary with client subtotal. This is great if your clients have multiple projects, such as the Carters. So I can see one line for each of the projects, but I conveniently get a total for the client as well. So they know, hey, what are my total funds across all open projects? And two very interesting ones, we have our summary by receipt type. 
what this does is now it differentiates one line per project the amounts of deposits and retainers separated so you can very easily see where the total amounts are coming from uh, either through deposit proposals and or retainers so you can monitor those two individually and finally we'll have a detailed version of that as well that we can see all of the information that makes up the summary version so we can see the deposit on a particular project the retainers being reduced down to zero and all of the information so this is a great report to allow you to see not only the totals that a client may have available but was it from retainer was it from deposit etc great report that also goes hand in hand with another report this one is under project management and it's called the deposit analysis. <clears throat> Ideally, the open client deposit for the client uh, and the deposit analysis are going to match uh, perfectly. We'll look at our Bring a Team Beach home here. Let's take a peek. What this does is it's going to show all the funds coming in and how they're utilized on invoices. So it's broken down to three main sections. First is the retainers received from clients. So we're gonna see all of the retainers coming in. If I moved or, or refunded one, a negative value would be there. And it shows the total retainer received, not the current available retainer amount. It's more of a historical um, reference. Same with the deposits. We can see all of the deposits going on proposals. Here's us reallocating that 39.26 from before and the current uh, total received amount. Then we take the sum of both the deposit and, and uh, retainers for you. Then our third and final area is our deposit applied on invoices. This is going to show us where, what invoice is utilizing those funds. So we can see our two invoices using the deposit and then the total available amount, which will match your client deposit report as well. And the deposit applied on invoices uh, area also breaks out how much was used on retainer and how much was used on deposit. And lastly, you can even see the available deposit by line item. What was requested? what was received, and the available amount. And this will only list items that still have an available amount. So we could see all of the information at a much more uh, item by item and transactional level on the deposit analysis report if the open client deposit report requires some more investigation. Now, we get many requests, uh, questions on refunding and returning retainers and deposits. So we're not reallocating them, the clients want those funds sent back to them. So many, in fact, that we actually recorded an entire separate webinar just to review uh, the process, as there can be many different uh, ways to do so. So that is under our client returns and credits pro users only, where I go into great detail on using the uh, client uh, returns and credits window to actually allow you to very accurately and very quickly refund uh, those funds from the client in a variety of different manners. So uh, to conclude, uh, today's discussion was based all about uh, deposits and retainers and design manager, uh, along with providing many specific examples of inputting, reallocating, and utilizing uh, ret retainers and deposits. Uh, we also examined the tools and reports used to monitor the status of those funds uh, and even ways to return or reallocate the funds if necessary. I thank everyone for joining the discussion today, and I hope you attend another of our free webinars in the near future. Take care and have a great day.